welcome everyone to another broadcast of The Soul of the Everyman on the Artist First Radio Network. All past shows are available in podcast form. You can pick them up at artistfirst.com. We always welcome your questions and comments. Hit us up at dj at artistfirst.com. Now, here they are, Michael and Margaret Lines. <laughs> and thank you very much, Z-Man. And it's spring. Mm-hmm. I mean, this this is the first week of spring. It's lovely. We should do a happy topic. No, we'll never do that. <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon. Well, we're not going to do an unhappy topic tonight. We're going to do a, um, I think, an interesting topic. And, um, and, 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 and without further ado, the topic tonight, see how I led into that with grace and charm? Uh, um, I forgot. Oh, no, the topic tonight... <laughs> Oh, it's going to be a good one, folks. <laughs> it's, it's, it's poverty. Mm. But not the poverty we think about when we think about poverty. There's plenty of poverty in the world. There's plenty of, of people who have um, lack of material goods. But I think the poverty we're talking about is one that is a little bit harder to, to see. Um, it, it's euphemistically or perhaps um, most commonly called poverty of the spirit. But I would, I would say that uh, what we're really talking about is a... Is, is 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 it looks on the outside, Margaret, like wealth. It looks like abundance. It looks like riches. And in fact, it it can be as great as every material need and and wretched excess on top of that. But yet, um, when you see poverty of spirit, uh, and when you in fact when you see someone who is um, kind of drowning in wretched excess, uh, oftentimes you will say, well, but you know they don't look happy. And, and what you're seeing when you say they don't look happy is you're seeing sort of the evidence of, of the poverty of spirit. Um, you know, there's an old saying, which is money can't buy you love. And it can't buy you happiness either. Um, it, it is a, um, the reason it can't is that the, the lack that you are trying to fill or the lack that is being tried, that is being tried to, um, that, 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 that is we're trying to fill, I said it right the first time, uh, cannot be by, by the material. And tonight, um, uh, before we jump directly into it, we have a, a lovely quote from one of our favorite people, Mother Teresa, who we often euphemistically refer to because we're buds, you know, as Mama T. <laughs> And so Mama T and us are, are tight, or we were tight before she crossed over on the Golden Rainbow Bridge. But um, we, we still are, get along really well with her son, you know, Mr. T. And uh, between <laughs> Mama T and Mr. T, um, we have a wonderful quote. And, and the quote is really um, dealing with this exact sentiment. What she says, we're going to post this up on the website, is that in the developed countries, you know, places where there's abundance and wealth, there's a poverty of intimacy a poverty of spirit, uh, of loneliness, of lack of love. And uh, there's really no, and this is, these are her words, but I agree with her, there's no greater sickness in the world today than that one. Mm-hmm. Yes. The, uh, the experience of trying to fill the emptiness which people coin terms like it's a yearning, it's a wanting. I feel something's missing. Mm. And they try to fill it. And they usually try to fill it with stuff, whether it's physical stuff, whether it's food, whether it's... Sensation, experience, you know. Right. Um, But usually it's understanding that your heart is the one that's feeling the lack. Mm. And it's a baseline feeling. That emptiness, you know when the emptiness is there. What is that phrase? You're in a room full of people and you feel lonely. Mm. Exactly. Because there is no connection. There is no intimacy that your heart wants to participate in. 
fine, you got the, I don't know, the, the fancy shoes and the um, superb suit, the Italian suit, the, you know, all the trappings, the fast car, the position, the status. Mm. Fame, fortune. Notoriety. Notoriety. Yeah. But even those that are in notoriety have said, they're not really interested in me. They're interested in that image of me that's out there. Mm. And I think I find that absolutely fascinating because that hits closer to core truth Mm. than anything else. And you must experience that to understand what what it feels like to be lonely in a room full of people. Right. I mean, uh, you, what you mentioned uh, earlier, as you, the earlier part of your statement, you know, this 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 excess, all these excesses. Um, you know, you get into a situation where um, no amount of satiation of, at the physical level um, can fill that void. You you can get into excesses of gluttony, excesses of sensation, excesses of material everything. Now, the question I would po- I would pose here, sort of rhetorical question, but still we should maybe go through it, is is why do people find, you know, why are they misdirected here? What what is it is it the lies of the environment? You know, let's say where which Mother Teresa Mama T is talking about developed countries. She's talking about places where there is abundance and wealth and no no um, reason for lack. Of course, there's poverty everywhere, but in general. In the developed countries, you you know, it, poverty is is a is a um, a condition that can happen, but not the the norm. You know, it's in, a, in go it's ahead. a far cry from the state, true state of poverty, where people are dying in the gutters, hmm. and they're being stepped over like they were just garbage. Exactly. That's true poverty. Um, but but in these situations where where that isn't isn't the driving case, you have this tremendous poverty of of spirit, and and why do people instead of realizing that they're hungry for this for 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 companionship for for intimacy for for the connections of the heart, they 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 they, they steer almost as hard as they can away from it, and then as you said. I, 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 you know, I, I, there's something missing. Well, the, what's lacking there? Why do they do that? You say, I say. Um, I would suggest that it's been crystallized by social media because the tendency is to listen to the outward words the outward forms that are being used to project something. Mm. And in that projection, you're, you're hoping for intimacy, a relationship with someone, usually. And I find that fascinating because there is no intimacy with oneself. You don't know who you are. How can you relate to anybody else? Hmm. Well, I, I like that. I like that part of the, your statement exactly correct. I think that there's a um, there's there's both a a realization at a basic level that this is not the right way to meet this lack. I think that uh, there's the, the, the root of that. The, the root of the unhappiness they feel that something's missing is that below that. There is certainly a feeling that comes from the heart that I'm not being fed. The parts of you that you're that you're feeding are in gluttonous, ruinous excess. And and it's frankly the modern world offers many distractions. This is this is like the amusement park where you can try this, try that, try this, try that. Is it, you know, did that did that work? Did that work? And you just keep trying everything until you get to the point where you're sitting there going, none of this is working. Right. Um, but, uh, but I like, you know, the, the, I, I think there's a, um, 
more than just distractions, there's an active um, there's an, an active current of do this and you'll be happy. Eat this and you'll be happy. Wear it, this and you'll be happy. We're and we're living in a society where uh, commercialism and advertising is prevalent. They want to tell you what you should be feeling, and they have the perfect solution: just buy this right. or take this pill. <laughs> right. Uh, but 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 uh, what I mean to say is that it. Is it is it because we would love to have the shortcut? In other words, it, a shortcut. It appe- a shortcut, because it appears, at least it appears, perhaps to the to the sufferer at this, that the other way, both is uh, too hard, maybe, or too scary. Too scary. It requires perhaps too much, as you said, knowing of oneself. Um, but 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 I mean, if you is listen- the, uh, go ahead. If you look at um, the society now, you have a lot of prenup agreements. Well, yes. Which is basically saying that you know I'm gonna I'm gonna hook up with you for a while and let's see if this works out. But there's nothing called commitment. It's like, well, let's try this. Um, and, and life is to be lived. The whole idea is you're living life together. And that union, that commitment, requires intimacy, forsaking oneself. And it's not a viewpoint that is palatable in the modern society because it's supposed to be all about me. You're a reflection of me. What do you mean? <laughs> well, I think I think you struck upon something uh, powerful here. Again, you know, um, in developed countries, uh, there is a certain focus on uh, on the individual, which can, you know, uh, the individual. The focus on the individual gets a bad rap because you're saying, "Oh, you're being selfish and you're being self-centered," and, and all these have negative connotations. But but as we know the true focus on the individual is all about your free will and about freedom and about being, about being the individual. So um, there are, to focus deeply on the individual is actually the way to freedom from all this. But I believe the the shortcut is, well, that's too hard. You know, that's going to take actually you taking yourself to task and, and finding out what your faults are and, and then working on them. You know, I don't want to be like Mama T, live in Bangladesh or wherever and, and spend the rest of my life helping people. That sounds boring. I want to drive a Ferrari. Well, and I do kind of. But, 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 but that's, that's besides the point. The point, is, the point is I don't have a Ferrari. But the point is that, that the shortcut is sort of, well, you're already perfect, you're already good enough, you're fine, and, and you know, you should just work on getting, you know, satisfying the, the physical, the material, because um, you deserve that. You, you, you know, it's all about you, and you deserve that, and if you do all these things and get all that stuff, don't worry, the perfect you that, that everyone loves and, and, and will come out and, and you'll be happy. So that that sort of is, is the, I think that the... The attraction is that this is easier, you know, and that I don't have to do the hard work. Um, I'm going to say her name wrong, but Yanla, whatever her name is, you know, her her phrase, her catchphrase is "Do your work," you know, mm-hmm. and she's she's an interesting individual. And if you ever get a chance to to look at some of her shows, they're interesting shows. But the point being that the "Do your work" part, because she, uh, interestingly enough, spends a lot of time dealing with people who have wretched excess. You know, they're they're famous, or they're world. You know, they're they're they've got so much money they don't know what to do with it. And all these things, and yet she 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 comes to them, and they confess to her how deeply unhappy they are, mm-hmm. how how unsatisfied and unfulfilled they are, how 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 traumatized they are, how how poor their mm-hmm. spirits are. Mm-hmm. And what does she do? She literally turns it around and says, that's your fault. <laughs> and because you haven't done your work. In fact, you've done everything possible 
to avoid doing your work. Mm-hmm. Yes. And it's, um, as I said, especially if you have a lot of money or power, you don't want to do the work. You, you feel do. like you shouldn't have to. Well, yeah, if, if I'm this powerful, why do I have to do that? Right. And the truth is, that if you look at the power you're talking about, it's 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 in the physical realm only. It has nothing to do with your own internal spirit. Hmm. Your spirit goes, yeah, and? I have it to live forever. Did you know that? Well, well it's interesting you say, because the, the, the power of the physical is is so ephemeral, you know. Mm-hmm. It, it, I believe the phrase is, you know, um, uh, uh, you, you, you're you're hot and then you're not. Or you, it basically you're 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 today you're in fashion and next day you're you're yesterday's news. So your your fame and your fortune, and if the world has built you, the world can destroy you, mm-hmm. and and it and it will almost almost gleefully because you know like every shakespearean play or trage- greek tragedy everyone loves to see the 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 high and mighty fall you know and oh, it's drama right it's drama it's drama and, addiction and think, to drama and i think that's an interesting point of the, you know the poverty of spirit also uh, it seems to um make you susceptible to being addicted to drama whether it's your own or others well i the the addiction to drama is basically believing somehow you're actually living. You know, you're thinking, you're arguing, you're fighting, you're creating this like image and and people truly believe that that's living. It's like how many virtue signaling items can you put out? to show people that, look, my life is really fantastic. And we all know that those photographs are all <laughs> worked up. <laughs> the, but, the, but right there, the, the, the drama, the my life is, is really... It, it, as long as it feels like someone is envying you for something, then yeah. you think you're alive. And you're looking at that going, but... How does that actually have any weight on my life? Well, isn't it turning it around almost? I mean, if you've got to spend all of your time, in essence, keeping the image inflated, like you said, making up whatever is putting out all the signals or, or making up all the pictures or, or in essence, com- always, instead of living your life, um, spending all your time papering up the the image so that from the outside there's drama there's interest there's clicks there's um you know music a, there's light there's there's, there's fog some, machines there's <laughs> fog machines um and and i think that the the um the momentary you know we we talked this was many shows ago we talked about dopamine hits i think with, yeah. with um with dr bump I get Doctor Bump back on because the bump is bumpalicious. Uh, but um, <laughs> we haven't talked to him in a long time. I love Doctor Bump; he's the best. You know what? I think he's in hiding or in a monastery or in a recluse, recluse somewhere. Maybe he's with Mama T. Anyway, back to the subject. Um, Come back. Yeah, but but dopamine hits, which I get a lot. Um, <laughs> I make myself happy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, I do. Um, we're getting very far afield, but those dopamine hits are, you know, the drama. Whether it's a, um, you know, it's Andy or it's or it's uh, the I got something new today. I ordered something through the mail. I, you know, the, all these little dopamine hits become what you live for. You know, addicts, true addicts, people who are addicted to gambling or addicted to drugs or addicted to whatever the addiction is. Uh, the the basis of it in the brain is the dopamine cycle. Yeah. And so, so maybe part of the um, poverty of spirit is that you're kind of addicted to the dopamine hits. The drama hits keep you kind of in a fuzzy. Everything's cool. Everything's okay. But 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 there is this small voice which I think gets louder and louder and louder because that's why people like Yanla exist and why people end up on 
on you know psychotherapy couches or why they they literally have these incredible crashing midlife crises where despite the fact that perhaps they're you know of royal blood and have a million billions a zillion dollars they cry that I am I am so poor of spirit I am I am I feel abused neglected I nobody loves me everybody hates me I'm going to eat some worms those kinds of things <laughs> come from that small voice which cannot be denied and gets louder and louder. Well, that, especially as uh, time marches on, you begin to realize that, well, what... The question arises, what have I done? Exactly. You know, and then you're sitting there going, wait, was it... Was it important to do something? Or or what you've done was only giving you dopamine hits? Well, wait, wait, stop there for a second. I want to ask you a question. Mm Mm-hmm. Why? Where does that question come from? What have I done? Because as you said, what part of you, part of you knows, like like you haven't done your homework, it knows that you haven't done your work. Mm-hmm. And you get, it's almost, a, it's like a weird kind of guilt. But yeah, go ahead. Tell. Well, it's the empty heart. But the, but, the heart that, that it has not been able to reach out and embrace, another person in true intimacy a heart to heart connection uh, let me go one let me put one more i like that but i think there's also like you said there is a purpose we come here for a purpose and and if you don't do that it, part of it is certainly relationship in fact a great deal of it is relationship it's, but but you get, you start to, as you get older and older and older, you realize, hey man, the clubhouse is up there on the hill. I, I, I think I came here to do something. Maybe I should do it. <laughs> you know? It's like the kids that do homework. They're supposed to do their homework and hand it in, and it's the last minute thing. They, they cram, and the last day that has it will, has to be handed in. Um, the tendency for humans is, let's face it, lazy. Don't want to do it because it means that I have to work at something. And I'd rather do this. And when do you ever do anything? Because you want to. Yes. Okay. What motivates you to take steps into something like clearing yourself out and reaching out to have a true intimate relationship, loneliness, Mm. isolation, Mm. emptiness. You sit there and you see this vast hole, gaping hole, and you've tried filling it with all types of items and all types of experiences, and it doesn't even partway fill it. Mm. It dulls your body for a period of time, maybe, but the emptiness is even more cavernous at that point because you you tried everything you thought you knew. Mm. So you're on the, the brink, and it's despair. You are at the edge of yourself. It's despair. And suddenly, at this point, you realize, I have... To allow myself to break. My ego's got to break. My ego was standing in the way. Everything I thought that was important, I did. Mm. And it's not working. So you have to come to the end of yourself, is what you're saying. You have to come to the end of yourself. Everything you thought you knew. And I believe it's harder the, the, the smarter you are. Because you can think up so many different ways to try to figure it out. <laughs> but but so so let me just put a fine point on it because I think you're exactly right. So you get you come to the end of the of this path and you realize it's void, and and perhaps that the 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 first realization is that like you said, I've come here I am and what have I done with my so what have, and and that isn't that I haven't done anything I've done many things but none of them have done what I wish them to do they have not fulfilled me in any way 
and and you almost look around and say with with almost envy and say look at this look at this look at this guy over here he's happy as a clam he's he he why he he has nothing his his car is 17 years old he's he's five hundred dollars uh, five thousand dollars in debt he's a oh yeah, but he's a happy person and and why can't I this is still I think in the ego why can't I be happy you reach the end of yourself and you have to break the I. You have to realize that the, the I is what, as you said, is what's standing in your way and you have to go beyond it. You have to almost set an internal limit for yourself to say, okay, my I that knows everything, my I know, I've <laughs> done everything my I know said mm. and it didn't work. So you have to kind of fire your I know. You You failed. You failed. You failed. So instead of becoming depressed about it, say, okay, let's try something else. Completely different. I think that takes tremendous courage, though, because I, you know, when you get to this end, you said there, you, you have a choice at that point. You can despair, say, I don't, I've tried everything, I don't want to do, and people do fall into pits, you know, these, yeah. these crisis points, you know, call it a midlife crisis for want of a better word, but it can happen at any point in your life. Um, if you've been addicted to drugs, you hit, it's called hitting rock bottom. Well, if you've if you've spent your life in what now feels like like trivial, because everything you've done has given you nothing back to your heart. You know all these all these whatever hundreds of thousands of things have given you not what you wanted. And your experience has always been in the ephemeral moment. Mm-hmm. You have not made or touched into the eternal moment. Right. Where you're actually truly living with heart alive and interacting with everything around you in that moment of now, space and time, as well as if you happen to be with someone. Your heart is looking to fill those eternal moments, to make touch points. That's what it was made for. Mm. And not to have any, that's when you feel super empty. Super super poverty of spirit. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, I think people do at that point, when they reach that point, and they realize that, that this isn't working, whatever it is, you come to this crisis point, and you start to look around, you sort of look around with other eyes, and you do, you're struck by the happiness of others. This, and and in many ways, it's the antithesis of what uh, perhaps you had believed your whole life would make you happy. You see someone whose who's life from the outside looks um, just like a hellhole. Um, Mama T was living in a slum with the poorest of the poor, with lepers, with people who were dying of, of all types of third world diseases um, and had nothing. And yet, and, and even her challenges were greater than that. But the point is, is that, and yet, you couldn't say that she wasn't performing her life's work in the eternal moment. Serving others was her life's work. Now, that's not everybody's life's work. If everybody's life's work was to live in the slums of Calcutta, um, well, they'd be crowded even more than they already are. <laughs> But the point is, is that's not, but you have to, she found her purpose. It was not an easy road, but, but the first step on the road is to seek your purpose. And, and sometimes your purpose can be acquiring great wealth, but if it is, you'll be happy and fulfilled doing it because it will be your purpose. It's when you're acting against it that, that you are, uh, that you find yourself impoverished. But before we, go on into that point let's take a little break take nice. a little breath we'll go back to the studio and we'll come back on the other side and we'll talk more about poverty The Fat Man Gets Out of Bed is the latest book from Michael Lines, the award-winning author of There is a Reaper. 
Featuring 13 original stories, this wide-ranging collection has everything. Forbidden love, gods versus demigods, weird invading aliens, sexy seductive artificial intelligence, and unusual passion between the living and the dead. All set amidst fantastic worlds of pain and loss and boundless joy. From the sublime to the macabre to the bittersweet, the fat man gets out of bed will leave you breathless with laughter, brimming with tears, trembling with suspense. Available now on Amazon.com, Google Play, iTunes, Kobo, and fine e-tailers everywhere. The wait is over. First Blood, book two of the Blood series is out. Your favorite bad boy thief, Dev, is back. And the beautiful and deadly Trey is right there with him. She is sharp, sexy, and full of surprises. The adventures continue as a new power arises to threaten the world. The heart of creation is under attack and time is definitely not on their side as they battle against their enemies' undead hordes. Can they unlock the hidden power that can defeat him or will his forces draw first blood? Get all three installments in the series. Book Zero, It's in the Blood. Book One, Destroyer's Blood, and the new release, Book Two, First Blood Today. Available in ebook and paperback format on Amazon, Kobo, Apple, and most other fine e tailers. Rick Rodan fans, love mythology with plenty of action and humor? Destroyer's Blood is for you. The new fantasy novel by award winning author Michael Lines is Book One of the Adventures of Dev Kalian, the Blood series. Follow Dev and his magic sword betrayer as they are suddenly attacked and forced to return to Olympus to fight in a war they want no part in. The world of men and gods is about to be destroyed by Zeus's ancient foe and only Dev and Trey can stop him. The conflict never stops and the amazing twist will have you on the edge of your seat. Act now while the ebook is on sale for only 99 cents. Destroyer's Blood is available on Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, iTunes, Kobo, and fine e-tailers everywhere. And while you're there, get the free prequel, It's in the Blood, available for a limited time. There is a Reaper is the story of five-year-old Christopher Aaron and his life-changing struggle with leukemia. Winner of both the Indie Bragg Medallion as well as the reader's favorite silver medal for memoir, there is a Reaper has more than 100 Amazon book reviews and a five-star rating. It has been described as life-changing, spiritual, a must-read. Just released on Audible and iTunes, this memoir is also available in paperback and on Amazon Kindle for only 99 cents. Get your copy of this life-changing memoir today. Hi, this is Hannah Ruth from the band Wild Hum. Check out our new Americana Soul CD, Wild Hum, at our website, W-I-L-D-H-U-M music.com. And you are listening to the Artist First Radio Network. Thank you. for joining us on The Soul of the Everyman on the Artist First Radio Network. Back to your hosts, Michael and Margaret Lines. Thank you very much, Scott. And, and, and we are fulfilled. Because <laughs> this show is our life's work. <laughs> Actually, it's not, it's not. But it is an, it's a very interesting thing, but we're not going to go in that direction. Today we're talking about, um, you know, uh, a very interesting quote by our, 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 gra- our bestest bud, Mama T., uh, about, in essence, the poverty of spirit. And I think, you know, Mother Teresa is only one person who, who has opined on this. There are many others, uh, because it is, it is part of the human condition. I think we all run the risk of listening to the siren song we've been talking about in the last half hour of the material. And I think when there is great abundance, it, it's, it's easier. Um, not that poverty is, you know, it's not wonderful to be poor. In fact, it's terrible to be poor. But in, in material goods, because you know, privation of food, of sustenance, of the basic needs of life, um, can certainly make it very difficult to um, to live your life in a in a way that is fulfilling. However, um, when when it's when there's 
uh, I hesitate to say too much when when it's so easy to allow the distractions of the material to become everything and and frankly when you remove from a society its connection or it's the training of its connection to spirit i'm not saying any one particular religion because there are many there are many different paths that align us with the eternal but when you remove that and you substitute in its place a sort of 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 uh, wretched materialism it, it, it makes it so it, it leaves people without a clue on what could be the lack because we are we are beings both of flesh and of soul and of spirit and if you don't feed all three the ones that aren't getting fed will make their presence known and and this is the root i think margaret of the of the little voice it's it's a little voice that gets louder and louder because it's being starved and it knows the heart knows that um it's it's actually more than just essential it is it is really a a a a much more um primal it is it is primary to our purpose here the eyes of the heart and and that which we yearn towards more than than all the other things which we need we need to eat we need to breathe we need to get gas in the car those are all things we have to do to live but the 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 urges of the heart that which brings us joy and bliss the relationships these are the things that 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 are more important and without you know if you have all those other things you know if you have all things of the world but you lack love you are you are poor in spirit Mm-hmm. And the pain that's associated with that, because the emptiness, when that becomes real, people are horrified when they realize the depth of the emptiness that they have within. Yeah. And the first step is usually getting something else to put into it, buying something else trying something else but as we said uh, first half hour you've got to come to the end of yourself and you realize that nothing I do is going to fill this void and it will take courage to grasp that and say okay we're going to find another way And, and sometimes teach me you know, open yourself to spirit. Open yourself to, to saying, I don't know. These are words that are hard for people to say, the I don't know words. Especially as you said last half of her, the smarter you are, you say, well, I should know. I mean, I'm so smart. <laughs> right. Well, when you think you, or if you, you're a bit of a control freak, no. you think you've, you've <laughs> controlled everything in your life. And lies. So- All lies. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> oh, my. Um, and it's a habit form that people do embrace. I know how to control the situation. All you got to do is this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and do, 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 do. Um, are you honest enough to admit whether or not it has worked? And if it hasn't worked and you observe that the only thing you're doing is changing what you're focusing on, in other words, you're changing your parameter, you're doing the exact same thing, only you're doing it longer or harder or let me try it this way. But it's the exact same thing. You keep throwing stuff in to that gaping hole in your heart it doesn't fill it. It was your analogy some time back. Uh, I'll just—I think it, I think it was <clears throat> where you're living in the in the plane of the material, and you've got to realize that nothing in that plane is going to fill the 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 vertical the 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 this the the extra the extra dimension of this of the spirit. You have to 
you, 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 people keep circling or going, you know, I'll try it this way or that way, but they stay in this material plane and realize that the, the void is, is in essence vertical. You've got to go up. You've got to, you've got to leave the material and go above it, below it. You've got to, it was your analogy, I believe. Mm-hmm. Well, it, you can liken it to how a seed grows. Hmm. The seed you can see as a, a two-dimensional um, oval. And you keep touching just the outside of the seed, the hard uh, coverings, always. By, all right, let's try this, let's try that. Let's. Try. The only way you get, as you said, it's a vertical growth, Mm. The only way you get out of that two dimensions is by allowing the shell to fall away. And that which is in, establish its roots and reach for the sun. Mm. Reach for life. And that is being right in that moment. Grounded and reaching. Mm. The ground allows you to pull the strength that you're going to need to grow. At least the water and some of the nutrients. But there are parts of you that need to receive the light of the sun in order to make more uh, food to grow. To life. I mean, I love that because you know when you're when you're talking about a seed that is within, you know, a plane. It's on the ground. It doesn't have an up. It doesn't have a down. It just is. And that, you know, you, if you sit there and, and do nothing with that seed except continually rotate in a circle and keep sweeping, you know, all the, everything possibly, every, I've looked in every direction. I've looked everywhere. I've tried everything. Every direction in this plane has been exhausted. I've been everywhere. I've been all over the world. I've done everything. And I've had people say to me, oh, but I'm living on a uh, plane of infinite possibilities. Well, yeah, two dimensions. Yeah. You're infinite in two dimensions. Yeah. But you're not growing. Right. And the other thing that you have to also note is that that seed must be planted into the darkness of the soil for it to be able to break off the outer shell. And the equivalent being... You must have your your dark night of the soul. Exactly. I mean, that's exactly right. You know, once you've exhausted the plane, you know, this is an analogy we could take it as far as we want. But you you must you must in coming to yourself and coming to the realization that I've done everything and nothing's working. You have to admit that you don't know. You have to go into the darkness, which is in essence the leap of faith into the unknown. Um, you know, we when you when you realize that everything you're doing is not working, and you've got to do something more. There's an element of fear, there's terror. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I I I I the I I don't know what's going to happen, and then you have to go and become at peace with that, and say, the heart says, it's okay. We'll just try it. We'll take the step. We'll have faith, in essence, in ourselves, in 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 a, in a greater, you know. But- you really, at that point, you are at the end of yourself. You literally, you have traveled on every millimeter mm. of, of your shell. Mm-hmm. And there is nothing for you there. You, there's nothing to grab onto. And you realize that you have got to soften. Isn't it interesting, though? I'll just pick it right from your point. That some of us come here pre-softened. Or, or with the, with the, with, with an older, wiser soul that knows that this isn't the. We don't want to spend any time in this plane. We've done that. We've that was lives ago where we did that, and so you have have a great disparity of peoples who come, and you have great souls like Mama Mother T. Teresa, like Mama T, and <laughs> many, many others who come here and say. You know, from the, from almost from their earliest, from their first breath, from their earliest child, they open their eyes and they say, uh, I, I'm not interested in any of those things. I, I've been there. I've done that. You know, of course, I need 
to eat and I need, but th these, these are not the things which are going to fulfill me. These are the things which sustain my corporeal existence for the time I need to be here. I have a purpose. And, and I think that before we go to the end of the hour, I don't want to, I think, I think, I think that, that the ways to get there more quickly, because if, if we've said, if, if you've taken away from what we said that, that you have to come here and exhaust every possible physical thing before you can get to your next stage, no, that's not true. And you, and you know it's not true because you see people who, who very early in their lives seem to understand. The way you go quickly and realize that the falseness of this versus the trueness of that is, is don't use the I, use the heart. The heart always knows. When you always used to tell the kids... Ask your heart, should I or shouldn't I? Do I want it? Do I need it? Ask your heart. Your heart has a, a, a soft voice, but yet it's a very true voice. It will tell you, is this person right for me? And, and the eye will go, oh, she's great, she's great, she's got a Ferrari. And the heart's going, no. And if you listen to the heart, it's sometimes very soft, very, very soft. But if you listen to it, then you're going to get, you're, going, you're not going to have to go through all of the world. You're going to soften much more quickly. I always tell the children, <clears throat> ask your heart for the truth hmm. of an issue or a matter. And it will tell you. It won't lie to you. It will tell you straight. If you ask your head, it will tell you anything you want to hear. Mm. It'll lie like a rug. Like a rug. As long as you're listening to your head, <laughs> that's all it wants. Just listen to me. <laughs> I will tell you how you should live. I've got some drama for you right here. You're right here. <laughs> but if you want truth, ask your heart, and your heart will tell you, even if it's uncomfortable. Mm. Do you have the courage to embrace what is being said? And that was always the question. The kids, I love children because they okay. <laughs> they ask their heart, and it, you know, well, it said this. And it's just direct to drive. There's no questioning. It's like, okay. And they, it's something that we are born with. Hmm. And I think if you start them, if you start this practice early in life, if, you're given, if you have a good mentor, a parent or someone else who teaches you to listen to your heart, you know, sometimes they, people talk about intuition sometimes, but listening to your heart, listening to the still voice. Um, and then um, the next step, it's very close to the first step, is to trust, is to, is to, as you say, have the courage to follow your heart. Because the heart just says, it whispers here, this is, this is it. But sometimes you don't want to hear the, the brain, you the, the, head, the head goes, well, I don't want to do that. Right. Don't, well, don't that, cut a, a, take care of the poor. I don't want to do that. That sounds terrible. But but the head will do all those arguments. You know, we could be doing this. We could be having more fun. But if you follow the heart, you know, everything else will come. But you have to have, as you mentioned just now, courage. Lots and lots of courage sometimes. Well, I think we said this before. As a small child, you have plenty of courage. Oh. <laughs> You just don't freaking care what anybody else is doing. <laughs> it's interesting that we're born fearless. Mm -hmm. You know, this is this is a statement. This might be a, a topic for another soul of the every man. We are all born fearless. We learn to fear. The world teaches us to fear, um, and we it teaches us not to listen to our heart and teaches us to do you know the things that the head says. Uh, but we are. If you you talk to children at their beginning of their talking and reasoning two three years old they're fearless and fierce and they listen to their heart it, you have to you have to teach people not to listen to it right but there is a balance point mm. it's, again it's it's understanding how to to take in or the appropriate perspective mm. to see what's going on around you and then hold to the truth. Take in things and, and test them yeah. against your heart. Because sometimes people tell you enough truth that it seems right, but 
you know there's something a little off. Right. And to trust that. It's like, okay, well, there's something off here. Ask your heart, well, what's going on? What's off here? Right. And it'll tell you. <laughs> right. Or, or, or I think it, uh, this is also, the, you, you, you've hit something exactly perfectly right, is even if you haven't been listening to your heart, you know you, we all, know when something's a little off. And then the head will very quickly and with hands waving and lots of, of fanfare and trumpets say, no, 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 it's all fine, it's all fine, it's all fine, go this, it's going to be great, it's going to be great. But, but it tries to drown out the heart. The heart cannot actually be ever completely silenced. You have to willfully ignore it. You have to choose not to listen. And yet the heart will just, yep. And, and the, the misgiving that you feel is, the, is, is where you need to trust Mm-hmm. Um, because you know uh, something tells me that it just doesn't feel right. You know, the, it, people it, 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 it talk about trusting your gut, trusting your instinct. This is all in, in and of this, in and of the same. These are all analogies to the heart. That 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 feeling of unease, of disquiet, of just a little misgiving or a little, you know, not. You know, the more you trust it, then the stronger and stronger it will become. But everyone's born with it. You have to you have to train yourself almost willfully to be blind to it. Well, you can be trained to fear mm. or over fear or over worry, and when that happens, uh, you basically begin to override your gut mm. or your heart feeling because you think you can figure out an answer instead of understanding that well you, yes your head is there to do that but it's got to be balanced yeah you know the the baseline is if it doesn't feel right then you shouldn't do it you what? know you have misgivings and you can't put your finger on it. And I would turn it around, too, if it does feel right, even if everyone else is telling you not to do it. You know, um, the, the, the core of, of many, many stories is that you follow your heart, even though all others around you are telling you that this, should, this is not right, you shouldn't do that. You're, you're, you know, you'll, you'll be poor the rest of your life, you'll be living in a slum the rest of your life. If, if, you're, if it's truly your bliss, your joy, your purpose, follow it. You will be haunted by a regret. The, mm. the what if. The what, what if, if. What if I did that? And there's a part of you that understands that that what if is probably one of the sharpest edges to prick you mm. for the rest of your life. Mm. When you make the decision that no regrets... I, I take responsibility for me. I have decided that I am not going to have that as a regret. Right. I will take the decision, and whatever it is, the repercussions are, I am walking my way through it. Mm. I am walking fully in my experience. Now, I had someone argue with me that regret means... Um, well, you you have the repercussions of the actions. Don't you regret having that, that thing happen to you? <laughs> you're like, I'm talking about making a decision with no regret. But you always have regrets. <laughs> and I'm looking at them like uh, making a decision where you have no regret means that you're not doubling back right. and trying to remake the decision after you've made the decision. Right. Living in the past. Yes. Right. No, but you, you always have regrets, which means that it's you're always living in the past. Right. You're always believing that somehow there's something back there that I should have done. Right. Which is a crazy thought, honestly. Mm. Because even <laughs> if you had the ability to go back in time, you'd find five other ways to try to figure out, well, maybe if I did this, or this, or this, or this. Right, but but I, uh, what I like about it is what you you know if if you if you have spent your life whatever portion of it that, that, that ignoring your heart at some point 
at some point, and this is the crisis point we were talking about, you reach that point where you say, what have I done with my life? And at that point, I believe the regret that you're, you're saying there is that, um, and, and it's easy to get trapped right there. To despair is to look at the past and say, I've done nothing. I'll never, I'll never amount to anything. It, it, it all was a waste. And, and the decision that, even at that late mm. point in the game, is that, you know, it sounds straight. Today, now, I will start to take the steps. It isn't that you may, you may not um, have the fulfillment that you might have had, but don't live there. That's the regret. Well, that's projecting. That's... You're, you're going to be fulfilled in, to the extent that you live now. Have you come to the point where you realize that this is the step I've got to take? Yeah. Regardless of what, I must go here. And did you take it? Right. If you took it, then that's great. That's that's where you need to be. Not worry about anything else. I mean, again, back to Yana, because like, she is exactly what she puts people in. She takes them, she kind of tears them down. She strips away all the falls and then says... Here, now, what does your heart say? You've done, you do your work, you listen to your heart, and you, and you let the past go. It's very interesting. Somebody said, well, you always have regrets. You may regret not doing anything up to this point, but if you live there, mm-hmm. then it's not regrets. That's, that's um, you know, that's in essence, breaking yourself in half and leaving part of you in the past. But you haven't uh, allowed your soul to come to, to wholeness. You're actually breaking it through into pieces. And that takes time to heal. So, in essence, the riches that are yours were always yours. The poverty of of soul can be can be with your your up to this point but you then say to yourself i'm going to turn away from this and follow the heart and the fulfillment comes almost without without effort and not that you won't work at it but it comes in any case um we have fulfilled the hour hour yes i feel fulfilled do you feel fulfilled Mm-hmm. Oh, good. Well, I'm Michael Lyons. And I'm Margaret. And thank you for listening. Mm-hmm.